Hey guys, Brian Beeler here coming at you from the lower lab at Storage Review. And in fact, it's a very quiet lower lab because if you've been paying attention, we got rid of the rack that was in here. So all future videos shot down here will be nice and quiet. Now what we've got today is a new box in from Lenovo. And if you're reading along the side, it's already sort of giving away what's inside. But uh, you know, just looking at it, it looks like what you would get in a typical workstation box, a 17-inch 17, 17 notebook maybe that uh, takes up a little more space. This is in fact not a notebook. This is in the Think System line. This is the SE350, Lenovo's answer to edge servers. So let's go ahead and get out our definitely not overkill knife and see what we've got going on inside. Now the SE350 was quietly launched back at Mobile World Congress last year, you know, back when we had events. And then in June at Lenovo's customer event, they uh, revealed some more details. But even back then, while it was out on the show floor, I could see it and touch it a little bit. They didn't really want it to be manipulated much, couldn't do a lot of photography or poke around inside too much. Uh, that's got a return label in it, we'll put that away. We don't need that at all. Uh, but so this is now obviously the production version. We've got a bunch of notices, papers. We'll worry about all that stuff later. Let's just get at the goods here. All right. Yeah, so this is a server. Hard to imagine given the diminutive size of this thing, but Wow, this is, uh, this is really, really cool. Lenovo has outdone themselves on, uh, on this one. So let's just talk about where this is headed first. Um, the SE350 is going to go into use cases like retail uh, where you might need something to run POS or a video system or, or something along those lines, but you want an actual server chassis with server components and manageability and all of that sort of thing. Now, of course, Lenovo, we do have some of these other units in. They have these, um, these Think Centers. So these are the Nano series, the IoT version here, and the, uh, the littler uh, Nano M90N. And these are what we would consider PCs, for lack of a better term. So they do a lot of work at the edge. They can do a lot of the same work that this does, but the big difference is going to be the power available here, the expandability uh, for things like video cards, more RAM, enterprise CPUs, and of course all the connectivity. We've got 10G on this uh, native, so we're already a number of steps ahead in terms of what the raw computational capabilities are of this system versus something like this that would be more for this guy, data collection, and then this is a little bit more of a, a PC-oriented use case. Again, still really useful at the edge, but when we say edge, it's important to understand that there are a lot of different types of edges. And so now with this guy, Lenovo's got the answer, or their answer anyway, to what computing can be at the edge and what capabilities are available. So let's go ahead and pull in a little bit tighter on this. We'll go over the, uh, the whole system, take the lid off, get at all the core components, and uh, show you more of what this thing has to offer. All right, so as we pull in tight on the front of this unit, there's clearly a lot going on. So let's just break it down real quick. Uh, we've got um, obviously the power and indicator buttons here, a uh, micro USB port for management connectivity, the little pullout guy for our X Clarity information. Uh, staying over on this left side, we've got a couple ports uh, reserved for SMA connectors. We've got our VGA, of course, now. We get down to the bottom here, we've got our, our connectivity. We've got two 10 gig ports here, and then we've got an additional uh, two gigabit SFP ports here. Working across the bottom, we've got a management port, two more RJ45 gigabit ethernet ports, and a couple uh, USB 3.1. Two other things to mention. Right here is where we're gonna have our one port that's uh, PCIe, 3.0 by 16, a low profile slot. I can see a heat sink in there, so there's something in here already, which is great. And I don't want to leave out, maybe the most important feature of the front is this little teeny tiny handle. Um, probably useful as you manipulate the system, but uh, kind of a cute little handle on the front of it. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe if you pick it up and drop it into your backpack, it's a, it's a handy grip on the front of it. 
Now as we spin around the back, a couple things to note. The power supplies were in the box before, so if we take a look at it, there are two 240 watt external power supplies that'll, that'll connect down here with this, they've got a little six prong connector. The other big thing, of course, you'll notice are the antennas for Wi-Fi and uh, uh, internet uh, through cell carrier. So they, they've got a set of antennas that came in the, uh, in the package and we'll connect all of those as we go. But just to give you an idea, there's two of each for that connectivity. Uh, a couple other USB 2 ports on the back and another uh, RJ45. So overall, when we think about the build and design of this, because of course they took the power supplies out, that gives them more room to, to make the device shorter and, and of course narrower. The other important thing is that there are two power supplies. So a lot of times when we think about, again, where these things are going at the edge, some of these small designs compromise by removing a power supply uh, to reduce cost and to reduce size. So we don't have that here, which is great. Uh, so that'll make it a little more flexible, a little more resilient at the edge. Let's go ahead and come in over top. We'll take the lid off and then dive in deeper on the individual components within this system. We've looked at the front and back of the server now, but really the fun magic or the best part of the magic is inside this little guy. So let's go ahead and slide this lid off. Now, while I'm doing this, actually, there's something really interesting to note. The SC350 has a number of physical security protections available to it. In fact, you can set it up so that even just picking up the server and moving it sets off an alarm. And also when we remove the lid, Right back here, this little guy presses down and that'll set off an alarm too. So in terms of uh, safeguarding the system from uh, physical intrusion, there are a number of methods that Lenovo has deployed for this guy. Uh, all right, so we've got a lot going on here. Let's start at the front and move backwards. Uh, looking here on this side, we've got the module. This is gonna be our Wi-Fi and LTE module. So we've got that, it just sort of pops out. You can see the SIM card slot there, which is currently unoccupied. And then the cabling runs that go back to our antennas. Uh, coming uh, this way, <laughs> this is kind of funny. It's got its own little enclosure for the uh, pull-out information card. And then we've got this big block here. Let's save that for a minute. The system comes with four DIMM slots, so these are all populated with 64 gig DIMM, so we've got a nice RAM footprint of 256 gig. Underneath here is, of course, our Intel Xeon D uh, CPU, so we'll, uh, we'll definitely be putting that guy to work. Now, you know my love of tiny tools, and this little wrench is fantastic. It's going to be for securing the, uh, the little connectors for the different wireless modules course ours are already there but if you needed it you'd be ready to go and actually if we just unscrew these two screws and release this we can start to get at some of the storage that's available in this unit so we'll put that off to the side now Lenovo's used a lot of their same modularity that you would find in the larger servers it's not quite as modular, it's not quite as plug or pull and plug or plug and play or, or whatnot, but a lot of the components like this are very, very similar. If we just give this guy a little wiggle and a tug, we can see that this is the dual-sided M.2 for boot. So we've got the two drives in there. That's ready to go. I'll set that off to the side. And now we make our way forward. Now this riser card is, uh, is really interesting. It's gonna have the access to the uh, PCIe card that I mentioned in the beginning that we know is populated because we saw the heat sink, uh, but it also has another storage module inside. So it is secured by a screw on the side, two screws on the front, a screw kind of dead center there that I'll get to next, and one more near the release tab. So this little piece of engineering is cool, not just because of the density, but just it, it's just well thought out. Everything Lenovo does with these things is really well thought out, and there's plenty of directions on here on how to access that. 
we uh, might have glanced at them or just known that uh, there's a number of screws we've got to get at here. And the last one is on the board. We'll get that loose and make sure not to lose track of it. So this module will slide out. And it's in there nice and snug. And then I'll disconnect the SATA cable here. And here we have it. So we've got an NVIDIA Tesla T4 inside using the PCIe slot. And then on the other side, we've got another M.2 board that's got two drive slots here. And then if we flip over real narrow, you might not be able to see it, but there's another SSD in there and another slot. So in addition to the two boot drives that we've got that are SED and ready to go for boot duty, we've also got these four drives available from a capacity standpoint. And with uh, these drives reaching uh, pretty commonly in, in a SATA, uh, two terabyte and NVMe larger uh, capacities, we can get a, a lot of great storage uh, built into this platform without too much effort. Now, one last thing that uh, I think is really interesting are the fans on the back of the system. Now, often we'll see in a big server little pinch releases to get at the fans, and while that's nice when you have the room, sometimes you have to come up with other ways to access these parts so that they're um, easily replaceable in the field. If you pull this little shroud off, the fans have little clip-ins. We don't need to bother with that, but what I want to show you is right underneath, there's a little, there's a little thumb or uh, indentation for a finger where you can pop the, push up and pop the little fans out. And if we disconnected this little clip, we'd pull it out and, and swap out the fan. So even though Lenovo's taken a server concept and squished it down to such a small size, they really thought about modularity, field serviceability of these units. And again, it's all really well thought out, laid out uh, very nicely. One last thing to consider, we're only using a single SC350 in this current review and this current project, but Lenovo's thought also about the deployment of these units and they've got a number of mounting brackets for wall and ceiling mount. They've got uh, rack mount so that if you do wanna put this in a rack, you could set, uh, set some side by side. Uh, they've got a um, like a bookshelf mount where you can put them on their side and put three together. That would be great if you're going to do this uh, as hyperconverged. They are certifying this uh, platform across a number of software-defined and hyperconverged infrastructure software stacks. So you could do vSAN on something like this. You could uh, potentially run scale computing, Azure Stack HCI, whatever you want uh, within reason. So with the 10 gig on board, Pretty good storage footprint, plenty of RAM, the T4, uh, Xeon D processor. We've got a lot going on here, a lot of capabilities, and we can't wait to get this thing fired up in the lab to see what it's capable of. So that's what we're going to do next, reassemble this guy, get it to work, and uh, uh, check out storagereview.com in a couple of weeks, and we'll, uh, we'll have all sorts of great content on this, uh, on this in our review. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it.